Hello, this is Frank Monaghan from the E302 module team and in this screencast I'm going to talk about a translation of a poem that you can see here by William Wordsworth, My Heart Leaps Up When I Behold. And I'm going to begin by playing you a recording of this. There is some music in the background which I hope you don't find too disruptive. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began so is it now, I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old, or let me die. The child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. Uh, if you're familiar with the work of Wordsworth or the Romantics, some of these things will strike you as quite uh, typical features. So there are the references to nature here, rainbow, the sky. There is the trope of the child being the father of the man in the sense of our moral, spiritual development arising out of this connection with nature and being natural. So this combination he brings at the end there of natural piety. Uh, these are typical features. And from a formal aspect, we can look at this and say, yes, it's recognisably a poem. We can see uppercase letters. It's written in lines. Uh, there is rhyme and so on. And what I want to look at is a translation by the uh, Austrian poet um, Ernst Jandl. And Jandl was writing in the post-war period into the 50s and 60s. And he uh, makes a, quite a different poem out of it. You may not think it's a, a translation at all, in fact. If you look at it, it's quite different. There are no uppercase letters there, um, and so on. So just from, even if you don't speak German, you can see that it looks somewhat different. And if I show you a word-for-word -word translation of this, I think you may even question whether it's a translation at all. I'll just read it. May hard deer pines, you sweet he run drill in Lake's Key, such thing sees when May runs commit. So it sees near Emma mo, so offer when little arse growls ear lick with egg, see steep this more faded horse's mo, in doe, curt, wipe may therefore be a tree German female, German male, bayonet sheer alp egg beast. You may question whether this is a translation at all, or indeed even if it could count as poetry. I would argue that it can. You'll notice that there are, as in Wordsworth, references to nature. There are pines, there's the yew, there's the lake, uh, there are horses. But it's obviously quite different. So where we have the heart being mentioned and rainbows in Wordsworth, here we've got the arse growling uh, and fade things. So it's quite a different sort of version of nature that's there. Uh, we may even see that there are references to militarism, perhaps even to the war. We have the bayonet, we have other sharp things like shearing, uh, we have the drill that's there, the mower. So it's conjuring up a different sort of world. And this may be read as a comment by Yandel on the impossibility of transferring something that was written in the Romantic period to the modern period. It may be that he's saying our relationship to nature is one that is very different now than it was possible in Wordsworth's uh, time. It may, of course, also be about the impossibility of translation. You'll notice that the translation is given it is Oberflächenübersetzung, surface translation. Uh, but what does he mean by that? Well, I think if I play you a recording of Yandel reading it, you may get a closer idea of what exactly it is that he has in mind by that. Uh, Yandel was very interested in the nature of sound and the importance of sound, uh, which he felt had been left out of consideration when thinking about poetry, uh, taking too much of a semantic turn. He's interested in the actual sound. So listen to Yandel reading this poem and try and remember the uh, English version of it. My heart leaps up when I behold er rennt bohr in see sky. So was sieht, wenn mein läuft begehen, so es sieht nahe immer mehn, so biet, wenn er schon kreut, or leck mit ei. Sieht steil dies Vater Rosse mehn, in Teig kurt wisch 
mei desto bie. Baum, deutsche, deutsch, Bajonett, Schuhe, Alp, Eiertier. So, obviously, he, what he's done here is taken the words from Wordsworth's poem and found words in German that sound as close as possible to them. And what he does with this then is to evoke quite a different world view that's there. I could have mentioned, for example, the uh, some crudities that are there. For example, the word um, I or Eier here can mean um, testicles in German. And we also have this you know, typical German things about dough, you know, one thing I think about bread and um, beer. So he's evoking the differences between the, the, the two worlds. And yet, at the same time, there is this connection to it with these references to nature. So in some ways, it is a translation, not just of the words, but a translation of cultures and a translation through not only space then, but also through time. And I think if I play you a reading of the two poems, uh, two versions side by side, you will get a clear idea about just how connected they are and maybe regard this translation as uh, an extraordinarily creative act, in fact, although at first sight it may not appear so. Here is the two poems read, one overlaying the other. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is she now, am I mean? So be it when I shall grow old. Oh, let me die. Seht steil, dies Vater Rosse mein. In Teig kurb ich mein Desto Bier. Baum, Deutsche, Deutsch, Bajonett, Schuhe, Alp, Eiertier. <laughs> 